Good afternoon. My name is John Filmy. I'm the Chief Economist of the American Petroleum Institute in Washington, D.C. API is a trade association representing all aspects of the petroleum industry, from exploration, refining, marketing, all the way to the gas tank. Um, we're here at CPAC talking about what we think is important for energy policy. And there's a lot of discussion going on, and a significant component of it is divorced from the facts of the industry. And so what we're trying to say is that at a time when we need more jobs, we need a stimulated economy, that there's a key thing that uh, we could do going forward right now, and that's develop the undeveloped oil and gas resources that we have in this country. We have a vast amount of undiscovered oil and gas that if we were allowed to develop it, could generate jobs, revenue for the government, and a reduced trade deficit. And that's a win-win-win proposition, and we think we could move forward on it. Unfortunately, what we've had is discussions that tend to focus on just one narrow segment of the industry, such as renewables. So, for example, people are talking more about solar, wind, and geothermal than they are oil development. Now, yes, we're going to need those resources going forward, but solar, wind, and geothermal are electricity. And we have 250 million cars in the United States that don't plug in. They're going to need oil for the coming decades. And so if they're going to need oil, we might as well produce it here, because we can generate those jobs, that revenue, and improve trade deficit. And so what we're talking about at this venue is what we talk about in every venue, and everyone who will listen to us. What is rational policy? Yes, we'll need energy efficiency. Yes, we'll need alternatives. But we're going to need more oil and gas. We're going to need oil for the cars. We're going to need natural gas for power generation. And we're going to need coal and nuclear. It's a good step forward in terms of seeing important changes in terms of nuclear policy, and then we hope that that moves forward. We'd also like to point out to people that much of the discussion can lead to unintended consequences. For example, we think it's great that we move forward with new uh, power for vehicles, such as electric vehicles. Um, but when you move to electric vehicles, first of all, you're going to have to generate that power from somewhere, and it's probably going to be coal for the foreseeable future. But also in terms of the battery technology, you've got to understand that a lot that goes into those batteries is going to be imported. So for example, we're likely to import rare earth elements uh, from China or uh, lithium from Bolivia. And so we'd be trading one import situation for another. And so let's be very careful about that analysis. Nuclear can play an important role, as we, as we know quite well. But remember, 80% of our nuclear fuel right now is imported from the former Soviet Union countries. And so that's another import. Now, that's a good thing, because that's the old megatons to megawatts program that uh, takes bomb-grade material and turns it into reactor fuel. That's good, but it means we've shut down the industry in the United States. So going forward, we think we could develop a rational energy policy that focuses on all aspects. But we also want to point that let's not take a step backward. Let's not do harm. Uh, right now in the Congress, in the budget, we have a proposal to drain $80 billion from the industry, from the oil industry. Uh, that was tried back in the 70s and 80s. It was a colossal failure. It led to reduction in imports, a reduction in production, an increase in imports. And then they poured the money down the drain on things that didn't work. So let's not repeat those mistakes. We also have discussions about climate policy. And the climate policy that's been passed, especially the Waxman-Markey bill, would uniformly hurt anybody who drives a car, flies a plane, a truck, and whatever. And so let's be careful about that. The last thing we want to do is adopt a policy that results in largely exporting jobs and increasing emissions. So uh, there's a lot of things we can do, but the first thing we would say is do no harm. Thank you very much.